In London, going after armed criminals. We are definitely tracking just inside the wood line. Searching for weapons. Sturm Ruger, 38 calibre. <laughs> and finding them. A weapon. Weapon. Diesel's on a roll. And undercover. This is not the right on. As the competition hots up. Billy the Kid, the new Spaniel on the block. Good boy! As the Metropolitan Police send in the dogs. If you make any sudden movements, the dog will bite you. Do you understand me? They're in the firing line. Leave the dog alone! Leave! Right under there. <laughs> 11 a.m. North London. Armed robbers have raided an off license and are now on the run. AFU are on route. London's police helicopter, India 99, is on the case. As is the dog squad. German Shepherd Brody and Sergeant Pete Madden. The shopkeeper has just reported that uh, su two suspects armed with a handgun ran into a shop, have pistol whipped him and stolen the, uh, the contents of the till. India 99's powerful camera will enable its crew to watch safely from a thousand feet. On the ground, it'll be Brody's nose that will be in the firing line. Only she will be able to link the centre of the robbers to the men they're now after. Three-year-old Brody is a police dog through and through. Her dad worked for Manchester Police and her brother and sister are also in London's dog squad. She and Sergeant Madden have been together for three years. Brody's got a massive personality. Her proper official name is Metpole Minstrel Honey. I didn't like Honey much as a name for a police dog, and my daughter chose Brody because she's a singer in some punk band, which seemed much more appropriate. Right, you possession of handguns, sir. Brown handled with uh, black barrels. Well, we need firearm support before we're going to yeah, search. High speed armed response vehicles, codenamed Trojan units, are already on the way, and India 99 also has news. A call coming in now, just run over the fence into a nature reserve. The nature reserve is where Sergeant Madden and Brody now are. They might be first at the scene. But there's no question of them rushing in. This is the last sighting for the suspects. They've gone into open land. Sergeant Madden's dog van has the latest police technology. It's a huge, massive area. Trojan, Sierra Zero. Yeah, we're still a while off. Yeah, Trojan 222 received. The Trojans being a while off means Madden and Brody have no choice. They must wait and do nothing until the armed officers arrive. Police, dog! Police dogs like Brody are taught to deal with criminals with guns, even when they're being shot at. This is the headquarters of the Metropolitan Police Dog Squad and their training base. Every one of the unit's 251 animals has been taught here. This dog school's reputation is second to none, and the teaching and testing is rigorous and continuous. Police dogs are formally licensed by the Home Office, and it's not a license for life. Every six months, each dog in the squad is retested to see if he or she is still fit for purpose. Yes. Today, one of the Met's best sniffer dogs, Diesel, must prove he's still got it. Like his handler, PC Adele Gibson, Diesel has been here before. He knows where he's going. <laughs> Sometimes training can be more, find you're under sort of more pressure than you are on a live job because it's, if you muck up, then they could actually take your dog off you, pull your license. 
four-year-old Diesel has earned himself a big reputation as one of the Met's leading search dogs. A Cocker Spaniel, it took eight weeks to train him to sniff out drugs, firearms and cash. PC Gibson renamed him Diesel after the Hollywood actor Vin Diesel. You can see he's shaking because he's getting very excited. The adrenaline's going. Like, Let me get in there. Let me get in there. Getting in there is what the examiners want to see, especially when it comes to using your nose to find minute and different traces of drugs. We just like to make sure that all the scents that they're supposed to find, they can actually find. If they're not, we need to know why. We need to know if we have to take the dog back in its training to make sure the dog can actually identify the substance that we're looking for. The substance Diesel will be looking for today is Class A heroin, hidden in one of these cases. To start at the red bag over there on the left-hand side, search those three bags. Touching the case with his nose is Diesel's signal that he's detected a drug. Good boy! A gram of heroin. Very good boy. Diesel might be a good boy, but he also has a bad side. He's got this habit where when he gets his ball, he likes to find shelter to hide under so I can't reach him. He's working to get his ball because that's all part of his game. And if he wasn't possessive about the ball, he wouldn't have to drive to work. Hey, good boy. During his three years at the Met, Diesel has won a number of awards, making him a top dog. But there's a new and younger nose in town, Billy. Billy's half Diesel's age, and he's still learning his trade. His handler is PC Derek Beatty. Billy the Kid is a two-year-old English Springer Spaniel. He was given to the Metropolitan Police by a woman from Northampton. His proper police name is Billy 12, because in the 95 years since police dogs were first used in London, there have been 12 called Billy. And Billy, I mean, Billy's just starting out. He's, he's still learning the ropes. And Billy has certainly got lots of drive. He's very enthusiastic. He, he's very keen to get on and, uh, and do what he's been trained to do. Last one, then. He'll play with his tennis ball until um, he's he flat out exhausted. It took nine weeks to initially train Billy as a police sniffer dog. Every six months, like Diesel, Billy has to be given the once over. In North London, the search for the two armed men who robbed an off-license and pistol-whipped the owner is gathering pace. India 99 is now over the nature reserve where they were last seen. Sergeant Madden is still confined to his dog van with Brody in the back. Armed Trojan units haven't yet arrived. Just make everyone aware there's lots of dog walkers in and around the footpaths in this area. Sergeant Madden knows that once he gets the armed back up, he and Brody will have to try and track the men. The uh, two suspects were last seen going into the open land immediately on my offside of the vehicle. Yeah, copy that. Thank you. Hello. Now the waiting is over. Everyone can get involved in the search. They went over the fence here and they've gone down that way on the border of the fence. There isn't time to clear members of the public from the scene, so Brody, Madden and the gun squad will have to be careful and use the helicopter to help. It's not the armed officers who will go first. Brody must lead the way. They will only be able to return fire if the robbers try to take on Sergeant Madden and his dog. The manhunt is on. Coming next, Billy the new kid on the block ups the ante. Sturm Ruger, 38 calibre. While old hand Diesel plays hide and seek again. I <laughs> see the look on his face, he's got the right on. It might be under there. And Brody and Madden get closer to the firing line. Oh, 
In North London, German Shepherd Brody and Sergeant Pete Madden are still hunting for two robbers with guns who attacked a shopkeeper and then ran off into a nearby nature reserve. Because you've got Tottridge Green. We are spreading out into the open spaces. Okay, road is open. Their armed backup, three officers from the specialist Trojan unit, are managing to keep up. Just. As soon as I let Brody go, I knew that uh, someone had been down there recently. So I knew that she had the scent of, of someone straight away. Might be under there. Brody tracked underneath a, a metal chain gate. And we followed through. Indian 99, Sierra Zero, we've got a positive track. We are definitely tracking. That's all we see. Good girl, Zoo. If she's tracking, she she will pull in her harness and pull me along quite nicely. Yeah. Madden isn't 100% sure she's tracking the wanted men because members of the public are all over the reserve. There's a chance Brody might not have picked up the scent the fugitives left behind. Loads of people here. But Madden's willing to risk it. Indian 9-9, zero, zero, I'm fairly happy we are on the right track. Yeah, copy that. And he's got eyewitnesses. Have you seen two men at all? Have you gone past this point? Uh, no, OK, no. thank you. All right. No one up here. All right, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madden and his firearms colleagues now have an even greater dilemma. Chasing armed and potentially dangerous men through woodland is dangerous enough. Risking a shootout with innocent bystanders around is just out of the question. Indian 9-9, we are definitely tracking just inside the wood line. That's all we see. At the police dog school in Keston on the outskirts of South London, Billy, the young rookie Springer Spaniel, who hopes to become a top sniffer dog one day, is about to start his six-monthly training test to ensure he keeps his license to search. It's the same examination faced by Diesel, the special service Cocker Spaniel with three years experience, who's one of the fastest finders in the Met. Billy and his handler, PC Beatty, have been together for just 18 months. Both aspire to Diesel's success and his handler, PC Gibson. The Dale has been a special service dog handler a lot longer than I have. And her dog is, is very efficient, and her dog's at a different stage in his career than Billy's. I mean, Billy's just starting out. He's, he's still learning the ropes. Once Billy learns the ropes, Diesel may have a rival to reckon with. This is the same test Diesel had. A gram of heroin hidden in a bag, the red and blue one. So it shows three bags. Billy's fast, but not as quick as Diesel. Posing like a statue means he's indicating drugs, but he must make contact with his nose to pass the test. In a minute, he will get there. Good boy! What's happened there Good. is the dog is giving us a behaviour to prompt reward. He's moved into it, he's frozen, but he's too far away, so that's why we wait until he puts his nose right on it. The fact that Adele's dog finds it a little bit quicker than my dog it means nothing, really, at the end of the day. As long as both dogs find it, uh, that's the important thing. There are even more important things to come. This was only the first of many tests before either Billy or Diesel will be allowed back on the streets. In North London, Brodie is also being put to the test by the scent left behind by the two gunmen. Good girl. She and Sergeant Madden and their three armed escorts are being dragged deeper into the nature reserve. Descriptions of the wanted men are now being radioed to the search team from the scene of the crime. Male, about six foot four, six foot five tall, dark blue hoodie and dark blue trousers. Good girl, sir. Look 
clothing is the best lead they've got. Especially as Brody has found something in the undergrowth. Zero, zero, Indian 99. We've got clothing discarded here. Yeah, yeah copy that. We came across a, a jumper that matched the description of one of the that one of the suspects had been wearing. But they're they're changing their appearance so that if the helicopter picks them out, they don't match the description that's that's been given. But Brody's found it. The dark top means Brody has been on the right track all along. But can they get close enough to make it pay? The stream marks the end of the reserve. A way out, back onto the streets of London. Oh, they've come over that bridge. This is not what Brody and Madden needed. The fugitives could have taken to the water. Yeah, I'll just give her a second here. So, so I'm not sure that we're on the track at this point. While Brody gives it a final go, India 99 is also running out of options. We've had a good search ahead of you. I've got no heat sources. If we can't find them, then yeah, we just have to accept that. Come on. Go on Are you happy for us to be dismissed from this? Yes, yes. Uh, many thanks for your help. Uh, yeah, please find They may not have found the men, but they do have some good evidence which may link the owner of the jumper to the armed robbery. It's only Brody that ties that jumper back to the suspects. Brody picks up the track immediately and follows it all the way through up to this jumper, and that provides an evidential link back to the suspects, you know, if the scientists can find some DNA on it. That's a nice piece of, of what we call pure dog work. There's no way we can do that as people. She's at her dinner tonight. I'm very happy with that. At the training HQ at Keston, Diesel and Billy, the new kids, have yet to earn their dinner and to see how they deal with weapons. Both are still being re-examined as part of their police license. Hey, 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 hey. Look at that, I am so clever. That's his little proud hop, skip and a jump there you just saw. The training unit have their very own TARDIS police box. It's not a question of who's inside, but what. Trainers use it for firearms. Oh, good lad. This one's for diesel. Uh, the first weapon I'm going to hide is a Sturm Ruger 38 calibre. Time is yours. It takes over two months to teach a dog like diesel how to sniff the most minute traces of gunpowder. The gun won't have been fired for years, but diesel has one of the best noses in the force. Bill's dog, Diesel, is, uh, you know, he, he's almost like an old sweat now and uh, very experienced and uh, he's got the, the share on Billy at the moment. Diesel is also quick. Okay. He's telling me he's found something. He's got his nose down. <laughs> Come on, there he is, sir. Diesel's not celebrating. His bad habit has kicked in again, and he's gone to ground with his reward. No, nope. I want to do some more. That's what that's all about. <laughs> she's got the right on. The fact that he hides with his tennis ball, it's all part of the game. I would, I would never get angry with him. Come on. Now we are done. Thank you. Billy the novice is next. The trainer isn't using the TARDIS this time. He wants to see if Billy can be put off by hiding the gun where there are more distractions. There is a lot of scent here. There is rubbish in this bin. We've got some road salt here. We've got our dustbin area. There is a lot of scent here for the dog to work through. This is a Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum revolver. Search is yours. Billy's still learning and gets confused sometimes. Handler PC BT calls them his moments. He has one of these moments every now and then. Even though Billy is indicating, he's still a long way from the bin. Yeah. Bill. Billy. Bill Moore. 
boy. Get a boy. He's got it from about five or six yards away, and that's not been fired. Looking at the records this morning for about two and a half years. Good boy, eh? Like Diesel, Billy has done enough to convince the trainers that they should both be licensed. Hey. Very good boy. Billy is fast becoming the new star on the block. I'm over the moon when, I, when I've passed my licensing. It, it is good to, to know that your dog is performing the way it should, uh, should be performed. I know how valuable a resource uh, Billy is to, to the rest of the Metropolitan Police Service. Coming up... Lay hands right! Felon, the German Shepherd, shows why she's named after American criminals. Hey, come on, hey, come on. And Brody gets her teeth into some real bad boys at last. If you make any sudden movements, the dog will bite you, do you understand me? In North London, Sergeant Pete Madden and his German Shepherd Brody are on their first call of the night. Witnesses have reported a gang of youths tampering with cars. It could be vandals or car thieves. We're running up to end there. Officers had a call to suspects interfering with uh, parked motor vehicles. Officers have attended the call, gone to stop them, uh, and they've all uh, starburst. They've caught one. We've got about three injuries. Uh, There's actually two detained. So we've now got two detained. We're running up there. Potentially a nice little call for Brody. It's not such a nice call for Sergeant Madden. He isn't driving tonight. That means navigating, reading maps. It's not going well. I'm too old. My eyes are too old. And it makes me feel carsick. Other than that, it's perfect. In this game, if you can't see the shortcuts, you lose valuable time. Left ear and then first right. It's frustrating because I want to be where that car has, has, has stopped and get there so I can get out and work with Brody and, and hopefully find the people. But uh, if I brought my glasses to work that night, I'd have been in a better position. It's straight over and it's on the right hand side. Fantastic. The directions are spot on. And other officers are already here. Stop, 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 stop. Before he can let Brody loose, Sergeant Madden must assess the situation. Where's the last sighting of them? Two young lads are under arrest. Two or three more are on the run. So it is a nice little call for Brody after all. Hello, sir. Did they come through your garden at all? No. Okay. People are scared of people in their garden. It's surprising how, how few people know we're there on occasion. And often the first homeowners will know that they've got a suspect in their garden is when they hear Brody barking. Brody won't be barking just yet. There's no one in sight. Go on then, find him. While Brody's hard at work, another member of London's dog squad is chilling in South East London. We expect a lot of our dogs, um, and uh, it's nice every so often to break up the evening for them, so they get some downtime and do stuff that's natural to dogs, so um, it's just nice for them to chill out. Felon is a six-year-old German shepherd, not as big as Brody or some of the others. She's smaller than the average because she has some Belgian blood in her, making her part Malinois. Her handler for the past five years has been PC Simon Cately. She was given to us by a member of the public. I took her on. She had the name of Felon and I kept the name. Felony, felony is, is for a criminal in America. There is a certain degree of an irony in it, and I quite like it, to be honest. So um, I kept the name. Sweet. She's um, very loyal. She's very hardworking. Uh, she's very intelligent. She's a better policeman than I am, I think. Sweet. Felon's night shift will last eight hours. <laughs> Almost all of it will be spent either in the back of the van or working the streets. For Felon, this is the doggy equivalent of a tea break. <laughs> you can only work with a dog if you've bond with it. They need that, that playful time as well. Um, so we try and encourage that as much as possible just to keep that bond going. They don't really ask for much and they deserve to have a bit of rest and a bit of relaxation. Yeah. Tea time is over. 
<laughs> Duty calls. It's back to work. In North London, Brodie and Sergeant Madden are still going through people's gardens, looking for the youths who are thought to have tampered with parked cars. These situations can, can easily escalate. Often they will hide in a shed. It's not unheard of for people to get into houses and out the other side and out past the police containment. Containment is the ring of officers which the police put round a search area whenever they can. Uh, yeah, I think so. An officer from the cordon might have the answer to where the runaways are. If you just come, I'll explain again. Okay. A colleague called me up and suggested I come round to the other side uh, of the block, which was some some distance away. He believed he'd heard something in gardens nearby. Nearby means over the garden fence and out of sight. Even when you're six foot five, getting over fences isn't easy. But sometimes, it's worth it. Show me your hands! Get your hands in the air! Brody has two lads cornered. Walk over that fence there, put your hands against it. If you make any sudden movements, the dog will bite you. Do you understand me? That's like perfect sort of dog work. She's only 32 kilos, she's much smaller than, than they are, but she's in charge there, and that's nice. How many of you were there to start with? Don't lie. Don't lie to me. Yeah, we've got two. Uh, how many definitely went over? There were five um, when I first saw the Edgewoodbury. But this time, Sergeant Madden isn't going to keep going. I think possibly the Broad's disgust. I'm going to call it quits here. I think that the most likely route they've taken is over the shed and over a big high chain link fence. Um, I'm going to settle for the four out of five that we've got. It's an 80% hit rate, which isn't bad. Good girl. One tap. In East London, the Metropolitan Police are cracking down on drugs and knives in a unique combined operation codenamed Sundew targeting nightclubs. For the knives, they're using new metal detecting arches. For the drugs, they've got Diesel and Vinnie and PC Adele Gibson. Well, it's quite a big operation tonight, actually. I think they've got multi-agencies down there. If we're really lucky, we might get a dealer. It's really busy. Diesel and Vinny don't often get to work together. PC Gibson's had three-year-old Vinny for two years. His speciality is finding drugs on people, no matter how small the quantity. Like Diesel, Vinny is named after the Hollywood actor, Vin Diesel. The difference between Diesel and Vinny, Diesel is what I'd call like a guardian reader. He's very intense, um, very work conscientious. Um, he just loves to work. Um, whereas Vinny is like the Beano reader because he's not quite as bright as uh, Diesel. Both Spaniels are desperate to work and compete for PC Gibson's attention. Oh, you handsome boy. Come on then. Come on, he can come out now. Look, no, now you can cut out, you're not. It's just like kids, really. They, they fight for your um, affection. Um, they just, like, they're just so loyal. What's the matter? Come on. Once at work, Vinny is as keen as they come, and so is his nose. Let's get the stash. Let's get the stash. Have you got something in your shoe, mate? No, 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 no. no. I think you have. No, yeah. Well, there's no mistaking when Vinny's got the scent that he's looking for, and what he'll do is just sit right in front of the person. So it's almost like the person can't get away. Hey, let's go across the Vinny's nose is so sensitive that even if a person has only been close to drugs, he will smell it. You just had a joint, didn't you? Have what? Have it? You have, yeah. No, these dogs love me, man. I've got a dog in I? Do I look like I've had a drink? The dogs may love him, but that's no reason not to be searched. But so far, Vinny has only detected the aroma of cannabis. 
No drugs have been found and no arrests made. What, for the bonnet? But other officers may have been having better luck. They've been stopping and searching cars and a driver has been acting suspiciously. They want Diesel to give his car the once over. It's... It's the handsome one coming out. Vinny, you're waiting there. This could be Diesel's chance to get one over on Vinny by getting the first find of the night. In South London, Felon and PC Kate, they are also hoping for a result. Officers have raided a house which contains a cannabis farm. Two men were seen running away. They could be linked to the house of the drug dealers who run it. May be in there. I've got her out of the cage now, just in case when if I need her to start running with me. A beat Bobby gave chase, but lost the men. <sighs> Where did you last see them? Um, they separated here. One at, um, off Belmont Road, one's come up here, one's gone down Macclesfield. Right, you're definite about that. Yeah. So, should we go to the bottom of the road and go from there? And came this way? Definitely one came up here, yeah. Okay, let's search up here then. PC Cately knows this is the difficult bit. He has no idea who he's looking for or what frame of mind they're in. And he can't wait for reinforcements. She is actually a tool for the police to be used to do a job that she's been trained to do. And at some points, so I have to let her go off and do her job. I'm still concerned if she's going to a dangerous situation. But at the end of the day, she's got a job to do and um, she has to go and do it. You definitely saw him here. The dog find him. Good girl. Where is he? Find him. Felon's body language is telling PC Cately something's up. Find him. It's too quiet. Felon's not barking. And they find them. The dog will stop moving and quieten down, and you can hear it sniffing and, and realizing it's found someone. Guys. <laughs> Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Leave the dog alone! Down! Hey, come! Hey, come! Come over! Out! Felons found a man, but is he one of those who ran away from the beat officer? Good girl! Down! Good girl, I've come. Is this your man? He's pissed or something. Look at me! Look at me! Drunk is. Is he? Okay, let's get you in the van, mate, okay. <laughs> the man is totally innocent. Returning home after a night on the town, he panicked and ran when he saw the police raiding the cannabis house. Felon can't always tell the good from the bad. When the dog finds someone, it's just absolutely fantastic. I mean, we live for that. People don't worry about what the crime is actually on the dog section. They like to know whether the dog found the person. <laughs> in you go. Go sit in there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Good luck. Well done. That was a good girl finding. Good girl to find him, okay? Right, Good girl to right, find him, right here. Operation Sundew is continuing in East London, and Diesel is trying to help prove that the driver of this car is involved with drugs. He's indicating there on the side panel. Sometimes I do really forget that I am working him because I get just love watching him run rounds and enjoy himself. While you're watching him work, and then you get that, oh, I've got smell there, and then they dash back, and then they get really busy in an area. And then you have that wry little smile, and you think, yeah, he's got something here. Can't <laughs> see. So, let's do this purple cannabis. The drug squad want more than just residue. Now it's down to Diesel to oblige. That's got one pound of residue on it. It's the first possible Class A hit of the night. Oh, good boy. Never boy. Nothing other than residue has been found. The car driver will get a police caution for a small amount of cannabis he had on him. Come on. Hey. Diesel's had his chance. Time to replace Vinny in the dog van. But Diesel never stops working, even when he's been stood down. Leave. Leave. Good boy. Cannabis. 
And I've tried to put him in the back of the car, and as he's gone in, obviously the, that's caught his nose, and then dragged me over here and indicated on that. It's a substantial find. Someone must have dumped it when they saw Operation Sundew setting up. But Diesel still gets his tennis ball. Come on! He's taking his ball under the car. And PC Gibson gets to again try and coax him from his hiding place. Old bad habits die hard. At the end of the day, he's working to get his ball. And when he finds something, he knows he's going to get his ball, and he then will run off with it. It's something that's been going on since I got Vinny, really. I think because he's not working as much as he used to be. So I think it's a slightly a frustration thing on his behalf. It's possessiveness over the ball. You need that possessiveness to get the drive, to get them to work. So it's, you know, it's, it's not a problem. It just means that lot of the search might take a few minutes longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> See the look on his face? He's got the right arm. <laughs> Yeah, go on in. Hey, got ya. Come on in. <laughs> yeah, the good boy. And yeah, hey. Oh, yes. Very good. Very good. Right. That's it. Coming up, Diesel's brother joins the Met. Hello. Lovely. And Billy the Kid finally shows what he's made of. 40, 50 reps are probably heroin now. While London sleeps, the war against drugs continues. That means more work for the dog squad. Billy, the young spaniel whose handler PC BT hopes will become one of the Met's top search dogs, is in Brixton. He's taking part in a raid on the home of a member of a drugs gang. The suspect today is believed to uh, be in possession of um, crack cocaine. As he's a gang member, he may also have uh, access to firearms. There is an element of risk involved. Two-year-old Billy has been taught to find crack cocaine as well as firearms. But he's a docile dog, and dealing with hardened, serious criminals is the area of expertise of PC Beatty. He's been a cop for 27 years and a member of the dog squad for nearly 20. It's down to me to make sure that, that I look out for him. The last thing I want to do is c commence a search and end up with him being injured in any way. And I'm sure somewhere in his, <laughs> his little head he's looking out for me. <laughs> Now that Billy's finally in the firing line, it's up to him to prove that his trainers were right to give him his license to look. The drug squad are here in force. If the man they are after is in, there could be trouble. As usual, the shock and awe of a surprise dawn raid is no place for spaniels or their handlers. The main man is here, now in handcuffs, no longer a threat. But bringing in Billy is something that the gangster does not like. Have you got any weapons? Just, just tell us now. Look how it works, mate. Obviously, we're going to search anywhere we've got a dog. Um, do you want to get the dog in? Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. I found it last night. Oh, I'm right. in my shoes. I wouldn't leave it. Miss. The mere mention of a search dog has prompted a confession. The man says there's a gun in the bedroom. They are a very, very effective tool. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely positive that the criminal network know just how effective our dogs are and do fear them because we do find uh, the stuff that they have hidden. No, it was literally on the way back down this way. He says it's in a sock in his trainer, but it's not his. Honestly, Governor, I said to you, I just literally last night coming in, coming in, there was two black guys running down the road there, and one of them chucked something literally by the gate. Yeah. It's a revolver, fully loaded. What else have you got concealed in here? I don't have weapon. Before Billy can even get into start work, the Met Specialist Firearms Unit, CO19, must be called in. To make the revolver and any other weapons they find safe. And ask them to give me a ring. They need to come out and make it safe. As dawn breaks, 
Billy and PCBT are going to have to sit it out until CO19 can get here. It could take some time. Meanwhile, Billy's fellow search dog, Diesel, is also hanging around in the park. Catch these! Oh, you missed it! A chance to play a bit of footy with his partner, Vinnie, and PC Gibson before his shift begins. You've got to be quicker than that, boy. Diesel and Vinnie are very different characters. Diesel was specially bred to become a police dog, while Vinnie was a rescue dog donated to the Mets Dog School. Saved from a life of cruelty and given to PC Gibson two years ago. Yet it's Diesel who is the less playful of the two. Yeah! <laughs> a lot of it comes down to sort of natural ability, but natural ability comes from the pedigree and from the breeding. So you've got a line of, um, of working dogs, then you, you know, you're halfway there already, really. The breeding comes from Diesel's mum, Sugar. She's one of the Met's prized mother spaniels. She's already produced 15 puppies who've made it into the police dog ranks. I've been very lucky to get, um, to get Diesel, because he has. He's come from a fantastic line. Um, his mum, Sugar, who's you know, he's had lots of puppies, so he's got like a very sort of good sort of line of pedigree. Almost a year ago, Sugar gave birth to her third litter. The smallest of the male pups was chosen to join his brothers and sisters in the Met. They called him Wilco. Eleven months on at Keston, Wilco, Diesel's half brother, is about to start his career as a specialist search dog. His trainer is introducing him to the woman who might become his handler. PC Sam Causer. Let's see if you can let him off here. Keep him with you. <laughs> okay. Come on. 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 There are already signs that Wilco and PC Causer are going to follow in the footsteps of Diesel and PC Gibson. Everything I've wanted really in a dog, he's just really keen, he's excitable. He's lovely, he really is, a smashing dog. Great character as well. In Brixton, at the suspected drug dealer's house, CO19 have arrived to take charge of the handgun found in his sock and to make it safe. Billy, here. Billy can start work at last. The man is still here. These people are so devious that they will offer up a little bit of something, uh, hoping that you that you you won't uh, search any further. This little bit of something might lead the police to other unsolved crimes. Billy is hoping that he can find anything that will make his name. This is where all the training should pay off. He will crash and bash about and try and climb over things and knock things over. And I've got to make sure that I can, in some way, control the way that he actually physically searches it. Now that the revolver has been made safe, Billy can search the arrested man's bedroom. He likes the look of the bookshelf. Or is it the smell? The spies try to climb the bookshelf. Just empty wraps of smack these here. And there's some heroin in a, in a pot up here. Good boy. The remnants are useful, but not conclusive. This is. It looks like Billy may have uh, found someone here just in his, looks like in his jacket pocket. Oh, it's a little crack. 40, 40 50 wraps of, of little bowls of the heroin now. The man appears surprised by the find but he doesn't seem to deny that the drugs belong to him. There's about 40 rocks in there, at least. I forgot about that, my bad. No, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. You forgot, I, forgot. I want to show you where a gun is and not tell you where that is. There's something else the arrested man may have forgotten to tell the police. Something Billy missed. 
is not what it seems. This is a replica and there are no traces on it of the gunpowder residue Billy is trained to smell. Billy didn't miss a thing and the new kid on the squad can hold his head high as a force to be reckoned with. The arrested man was sentenced to nine years in prison for possessing firearms, ammunition and drugs. When he finds something, I'm over the moon. I mean, irrespective of how, how small or large an amount it is, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm pleased because he's doing what he's been trained to do.